Hey everybody, this is Brian, and if you're following along, this is the sixth video in our Visual Basic tutorial. Today we'll be talking about the if statement. First off, what is a statement? A statement is pretty much anything. I know that's not the technical term, and I'm going to get hate mail for it, but that's a statement, that's a statement, that's a statement. You've seen sub statements several times before. What we're talking about is the if statement. This is how you put logic into your program. In other words, this is how you make it do stuff. It's very simple. If then is the syntax. Let me move the mouse so you can see. It literally reads like a story. If Bob dot happy equals true, then Bob smiles. So today we're going to just use a car analogy. And we've learned about variables and we've learned about booleans. Oops, started. So just write dim started as boolean. This will represent whether or not the car is started. And we'll just set it to false. Remember, a boolean is like a light switch. It's simply on, off, true, or false. And then we're going to say if, whoops, dyslexia much, started equal true, then, and you notice how it automatically puts in the end if. The if statement must end at some point. This is called a code block. Anything in here is within the code block of the if statement. You can also have a single line if statement, which we'll cover in a minute, but I want to explain what this does. Console dot, and we'll just say right line, and car, whoops, is started. Having uh, typing difficulties today, apparently. So if started equals true, then right, car is started. Otherwise, car is stopped. Or let's say off, car is off. Now when we run this, because the started value, or I'm sorry, the started variable is set to false, which one of these do you think will run? Let's find out. car is off. So as you can see, that is how you make decisions. Now you can combine these two statements by saying else. If car started equal true, then else do this. This is an entire code block right here. This is treatment uh, treated as one statement. Let's run this, see what happens car is off. So you get the same results, but it's cleaner code. It's easier to follow along. It reads like a story. If the car is started, then do something uh, you know, otherwise, or in this case else, do something else. So now we're going to set the car to start it just to show you what happens. And it says car is started. So that's the if statement. I realize if you're new to programming, this might be a little mind-boggling, so let's just peel the cover off this and explain in plain English what this is doing. You have a variable, and the if statement says if a variable is a certain value, then execute this code. Else, execute that code. One more time. If the variable is a certain value, then execute this code. Else, execute this code. And remember you have to end in an end if unless you're a single line if statement. Notice how it automatically puts that? We can also say a single line if statement. We'll say the car has really started. Notice how suddenly the end if is it says and if must be preceded by matching if. Now what it does is in memory it creates an invisible end if right here. So you don't need this end if anymore. You can just delete that. So you can take that whole statement right here and sum it into one line. That's typically bad form. Don't do that unless you really have a reason to. I know some programmers love doing that, but it really like makes life miserable for people reading your code. As you can see, car is started, car is really started. So it's executing both these if statements. 
So that is the if statement. It's actually pretty simple. Um, you notice that in this one we did not do equal true. Why is that? The if statement is always translated in memory to a, a boolean, an on or off. It's true or it's false. So how would you say if it's not started? Well, you could say started equals false. That's the easiest way. There are other ways, but I don't want to confuse you at this point. Just know that the if statement basically translates whatever value you're comparing into a boolean in memory. Okay, let's move right along here. To show you what I'm talking about, let's just erase all our work here and do, oops, dim name as string equal and then just enter your name if name dot equals hello then and let's throw an else in here real quick console right line Now what we're doing is we're saying name is equal to Brian and then we're saying if name dot equals hello then and what this equal function does is it takes the parameter and compares it to the current variable in this case Brian. So you can clearly see that name does not equal hello it equals Brian therefore it's going to say does not match. Run your code does not match. Now you can say if name equal hello and that does essentially the same thing but the equal statement actually is treated a little different. Microsoft actually recommends you say variable dot equals and the reason being uh, I'll give you a little lesson on computers here but the reason being is you're checking to see if the string hello exists and the equals actually compares that value to another value. So in summary, if you want to be a good programmer, drink the Kool-Aid, do what Microsoft's telling you to do because this is their product, and use the name.equals. But you can just as easily use the equal sign. I know starting out a lot of people like to use the equal sign because it's much easier to read and there's no harm in doing that. Just know that you can do it either way. Well, that's it for this tutorial. We're running out of time. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and send me a message or uh, just leave a comment. Thanks.